Another week, boys, and another twop. This week at Bungie, we prepare for The Worthy. We're just five short sleeps from Season of The Worthy. Last week, you completed the Empyrean Foundation event, lighting a beacon for Guardians to follow back to the Lighthouse and Trials of Osiris. On Tuesday, we unveiled Season of The Worthy all up. If you haven't seen the trailer, there's a new threat for you to confront. By the way, might be like one of the best trailers. I'm like conflicted between that and when we saw Saint 14. Bungie also dedicated a new page for the new season, jam-packed with information to get you up to speed before next Tuesday. Now, before we get started with the rest of the TWAB, I want to take a quick moment to highlight another blog post that went live earlier today. In response to the coronavirus outbreak, our teams have been working hard to build an infrastructure that will enable Bungie employees to support Destiny 2 and the impending Season 10 release safely from remote locations. Season of the Worthy is still planning to release on March 10th, followed by the return of Trials of Osiris on March the 13th. While there is a possibility that this change could affect our patching cadence in the short term, we'll be sure to keep players informed about those schedules as much as possible. Stay tuned at Bungie and at Bungie Help for any future updates. Now we have some housekeeping to do before we arm an ancient Wormont. Let's get to it. Hashtag Trials Returns! Moments after the announcement that Trials of Osiris would return with Season of the Worthy, we witnessed numerous Guardians sharing their favorite memories from this beloved corner of the PvP endgame. Moments of spectacle, joy, heartbreak, insanity, and everything in between. Trials of Osiris was the source of some awesome community highlights, a thing that some of our new Guardians may have yet to experience. We'd love to see more of your stories and bring them into the scene. Using the hashtag Trials Returns, share your favorite clips from Destiny 1's Trials of Osiris. You can post them to Twitter, upload them to YouTube, and even post them to our community creation page. We'll round up our favorites to be featured in next week's TWAB. If your video is selected, you and your fire team will take home a movie of the week emblem. Make sure to include the links to the Bungie.net profile of every team member. Yes, guys, Trials of Osiris, again, returning next weekend. And some questions have actually been coming up from some of you on whether or not we're going to bring back Last Guardian Standing. We actually are. We're going to do it. It won't be frequent. We'll have a video together about once every two to three weeks. And we may even start the season off with a Last Guardian Standing video of like old clips. And again, guys, these are clips of you being the Last Guardian Standing. It's somehow clutching up in the most miraculous of ways. If you want to be a part of that, we actually have an email set up, trialslastguardianstanding at gmail.com. It's a really long email. Jesus Christ. But for some reason, the other emails were taken. So that's all we got. trialslastguardianstanding at gmail.com. Feel free to send your clips, guys. And for the love of God, if you can include your fire team chat and commentary from the clutch clips, that would be even better. Because, man, that just adds so much to it. Silent clips, even if they're nasty, they lose so much to me, man, if you don't have the fire team commentary going along with it. Now, moving on. Power gains. With each new season, you're faced with a new challenge that require a bit of power acquisition to take on. In Season of the Worthy, you'll be challenging not only in Trials of Osiris, but in Legendary Lost Sectors and Grandmaster Nightfalls. Here's a quick update from the dev team on what's changing on day one and what our plans are for mid-season updates. So from the dev team, we're raising the cap for gear drops 40 points. Oh, wow. Powerful gear will drop up to 1,000 with pinnacle drops going up to 1,010. The soft cap has also been effectively raised 50 points. Gear drops from nearly all sources will continue to be upgrades until 950 power and powerful reward sources will not be required to progress to 950. We're looking to present an element of gear progression available each season as well as prepare underlying systems for future updates like the forthcoming one one for legendary weapons mentioned by Luke Smith in the director's cut weapons forever section. We're also looking to make some quality of life updates in the pinnacle band starting in 2.8.1, which is coming mid season. We'll be upgrading some existing powerful rewards to pinnacle rewards. These are the weekly crucible strike and gamut challenges as well as weekly clan ingrams. With this change, we want to increase the total number of pinnacle power sources in the game, broaden pinnacle drop access, as well as increase the pools of items that can drop in the pinnacle band. Slot imbalances can also affect pinnacle progression. When we say slot imbalance, this could be explained as those times you have a chest piece drop from pinnacle sources a few times in a row. We've been looking at player feedback for some time and are investigating a few approaches to the problem space. We're looking to have an update on that at a later date. Until then, we hope the additional sources will help you on your climb. I still can't believe we're actually having the cap raise 40 points with pinnacle drops going all the way up to 1,010. That's wild. Now, Bungie continues. While we have the dev team here, 
They also wanted to give an update on artifact power for Trials of Osiris. So from the dev team, with Trials just around the corner, we wanted to address the artifact power problem as quickly as we could. As Luke said last week, our short-term fix is to disable the artifact power bonus while in Trials and in Iron Banner. Unfortunately, Season of the Worthy has already been released for certification, so we won't be able to disable the artifact's power for the first Trials weekend. We have the fix in-house to disable it and are testing it this week and hope to deploy it on Tuesday, March the 17th. We really wish we could have gotten it for the launch weekend, but we also expect the first trials weekend to be the one impacted by the artifact the least. Players will have much less time to increase their artifact power, so the majority will be close to each other outside of the pinnacle drops. Our long-term plan is to enable a power cap for trials and iron banner, and we're investigating the work required for this. This will roll out no earlier than midway through the season of the worthy, but we don't have a firm date yet. We'll make sure to communicate it when we do. We also plan to look at the damage curve for power enabled PVP modes to determine what, if any adjustments should be made. Assuming we discover it's necessary, the timeline for a change is still to be dated. With both changes, we plan to provide more detailed write-ups before they go live, explaining the details of the change and the design philosophy behind why we are making those decisions. Just for clarity, I'll echo Luke's statement from last week. We're going to disable the artifact power bonus and trials and iron banner until we can implement a new power cap system for those playlists. I hope you enjoy season the worthy and may your run to the lighthouse be swift and merciless. Alrighty, so artifact power will be enabled for the first weekend of trials. Although the new season launches Tuesday, Trials will be released on Friday. That's not a lot of time there to rack up a bunch of XP to pump those levels up to make that big of a difference in Trials. And then, of course, the Tuesday following the release of the new season will implement that artifact disabling change for both Trials and Iron Banner. Now, moving on. Season of the Worthy Eververse update. With the turn of each season, we hope to keep players up to date on how the Eververse store is evolving. This season, we have a few changes concerning Bright Ingrams and a new path directly purchasing some previously featured Eververse items. Now, Brian Ingrams, in Season of the Worthy, Brian Ingrams will no longer be available for purchase from the Eververse store. As said in the February's 2020's director cut, we want players to know what something costs before they buy it. Brian Ingrams don't live up to that principle, so we will no longer be selling them on the Eververse store, though they will still appear on the free track of the season pass. This season, we are continuing to focus our efforts on direct purchasing through the Eververse store. So first up, there will be a daily rotation of returning items. In the place of Brian Ingrams, a new module will become available on the Eververse store starting in Season of the Worthy. This daily rotating module will feature one item from a small selection of ships, sparrows, ghosts, and finishers that were offered in previous seasons. These items will be available to purchase directly for silver at a discount from the original price. Aside from these changes, there aren't any other major shifts coming from Eververse. We'll be monitoring the conversation through launch and beyond, and we'll be sure to update you before any large changes comes. Here's a quick preview of some upcoming items coming with Season of the Worthy. So first up, Alrighty, got some, uh, got some armor, okay. Few ghosts, looking slick. I gotta say, that warlock jacket, that looks pretty dope. Don't know what the hell the titan's wearing. We also have a hunter finisher. We actually saw this in the video last week. He does like an uppercut with his arc staff there. We also have a titan finisher. What the hell? What the hell is that? What did he just do? That's not a Titan finisher. Why are they making our Titans look like a warlock? In what universe is that supposed to be a Titan finisher? Looks like a straight up Stormcaller finisher. Moving on to the warlock finisher. It's literally the same thing. Okay, I know these are different finishers, but they might as well be the same thing. Now, moving on, let's get into the meat and bones of today's Twa, the final preview of the patch notes. Over the last few weeks, we've been given some previews how your sandbox will be evolving in the season of the worthy. Not just weapon tuning, but the ability to change the elemental affinity on your armor pieces. This week, we'll be taking a wider look at Destiny 2 Update 2.8.0, exotic armor tuning for PvE and PvP, UI updates, bug fixes, and more. So first on the list are Hunters, Exotic Armor Pieces, Assassin's Cow, the Invisibility and Healing Effect now triggers on Power Melee both against Combatants and Guardians and Finishers. The duration of Invisibility granted by this Exotic is increased based on the tier of the enemy defeated. Also, Arc Staff Kills no longer activate this perk. 
Oh, that's kind of a bummer. Moving on, Frosties. Change the ability regeneration so that it no longer stacks multiplicatively with other class ability energy generating perks. Wow, that kind of sucked. All right, so I guess that four and a half second charge time for your dodge probably won't apply here. Is that right? Is it going to be capped at nine seconds like everything else? Kepri Stink. All smoke bombs deal 150% damage while wearing this exotic. What? Well, that's one way to get people to use Kepri's. Essentially, it comes with the exotic perk Touch of Venom. When you punch someone with full melee energy, it instantly casts a smoke bomb. You also gain true sight while you stand in your own smoke bomb. But now, your smoke bomb is going to deal 150% more damage. It's not going to be an instant kill. But if you combine the damage that your base melee will already do with the damage of the smoke bomb being released. Oh, man. Oh. Now, Orpheus Rick, the maximum amount of super that you can regain from this exotic with a single use of Shadow Shot is 50%. All right. I couldn't even remember. Could we get 100%? I thought Orpheus Rig already got nerfed once. Somebody explain. Now, the next exotic, Young Hamkar Spine, got an increase in its explosion radius for trip mines by 14%. And again, trip mine grenades will stick next season. On top of that, Hamkar Spine already comes with improved trip mine grenades. People may not use that exotic much in like regular 6v6, but in an elimination game mode where you get the lockdown zones and stuff, I can really see people using it. Now moving on, the Titan class, Ashen Wake. Killing an enemy with a fusion grenade while wearing this exotic now refunds grenade energy. The amount of grenade energy refunded scales based on the tier of enemy kill. Oh boy. That's nasty. I wonder what a guardian counts for. Like, what's the refund of that one? By the way, Ashen Wake, an extremely undervalued exotic. Makes your fusion grenade go super fast, has the hitbox of an elephant, and immediately goes kablammy. Now, if you can get back-to-back -back grenades, say if you're rocking like a max discipline build, and especially if you're rocking bottom tree hammers to begin with, with sunspots, oh, this could be nasty. Antaeus Wartz, the shield created during a slide no longer allows chip damage through. Well, I'll be damned. They're actually fixing it. Yes, Antaeus Wards have been bugged for like a good year. Every now and then you'll be sliding and damage will still get through and kill you. Sometimes I wonder if the damage did more damage when going through that shield. Either way it goes, if this makes Antaeus Wards more consistent, that's pretty much all it needs. It's a fantastic exotic that gives you a shield when you slide, pretty much allowing for our Titans here to win every shotgun engagement if they work. Now they should work. Doomfang Pauldrons fixed a bug where Doomfang Pauldrons would sometimes grant super energy from melee kills while in your super. Super. No! Yeah, I guess that probably needed to happen. Doom Archers, increase the radius of the static charge to 20 meters, up from 12. Hot damn. Doom Archers are arguably like the best Titan exotics already, but that's a ginormous increase. 20 meters? That static discharge is excellent for two things. Number one, it does damage to everyone with that linear actuator exotic perk. And number two, you actually visibly see the static damage going to those opponents, which actually allows you to target your enemies a tad bit better. Moving on, MK44 Stanisides. Reduce the delay from the start of sprinting until the overshield comes to 0.5 seconds down from 1.25. Holy hell. Essentially, if you like to be a shoulder charging ape, MKs, they're definitely the way to go. As it grants you an overshield while you are sprinting. Not really good in this sandbox. I mean, they're okay. But 1.25 seconds, that's kind of long. 0.5 seconds, though. That's pretty fast. One eye mass. The target marking from this exotic has been replaced with target highlighting, eliminating the ability to detect targets through walls. They also no longer provide a damage bonus when defeating your marked target. They also restored the previous overshield granted by defeating your marked target, which now has a duration of six seconds down from eight. Wow, big, big changes. Jay actually recommended that change last season to allow for target highlighting instead of target marking. This means that if someone's behind a wall, you won't still be able to see them. It's only until they are visibly in front of you that you actually see the target, which makes it a little more difficult to eliminate that target and single them out. But at the same time, you'll get an overshield now alongside, I guess, recovery. We should still get recovery, right? overshield plus recovery but without the damage bonus big big changes here to one eye i didn't think it was out of balance even now but i think this is definitely going to bring it more in balance considering that trials is right around the corner now moving on severance enclosure the explosion now triggers on power melees both against combatants and guardians and finishers the radius and damage of the explosion created by this exotic 
increase based on the tier of enemy defeated. I don't know, guys. There's gonna have to be a very, very good reason for me to use Severance Enclosure. They're good looking exotics, but everything that Severance Enclosure does can be done better simply with Doom Archers. So we just have to wait and see. And again, it's all gonna boil down to like whatever Bungie ranks tiers of enemies. And hopefully that explosion will ramp up significantly. Now moving on. The Warlocks. Oh, baby. Apothesis Veil. This exotic is now guaranteed to drop with a minimum of plus 16 to intellect. What? That's pretty wild. I didn't know they could do that. Moving on. Controverse Hold. Reduce the damage reduction granted by this exotic to 20% down from 40%. Thank God. Maybe now I'll at least trade with the Warlock. Sanguine Alchemy. Sanguine Alchemy has received a complete redesign. Its new perk, Blood Magic, allows the wearer to pause the countdown timer of any rift they are standing in by getting weapon kills, extending the rift's duration. Oh my God. Now I'm assuming this means you will not be able to target enemies while standing in Sanguine or standing in a rift with Sanguine if Blood Magic is going to take the place of Heightened Senses. Definitely was a beneficial exotic in team engagements probably would have been a little too powerful in something like trials but this is still going to be pretty good for single use absolutely anybody like to sit in the back with revoker and body shot folks in their empowering rifts well here's your exotic Ophidian aspects now increase the lunge range of all warlock melee attacks even if the ability is on cooldown. Whoa, okay, okay. Okay, wait a minute. Warlocks are already getting a plus one in range distance to their melee. So that stack with the Fidian Aspects, stack with already melees that have extended range, stack with the fact that even if that ability is on cooldown, tell you man, it's gonna be D1 all over again. Now moving on, Verity's Brow. The buff provided by this exotic now increases your grenade damage by 10% per stack. The buff to allies grenade recharge rates now kicks in when you cast your grenade. This exotic now provides a buff text notification indicating how many allies are currently benefiting from your increased grenade recharge. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, hold on. Let's just back it up real quick. Verity's Brow comes with the exotic perk, the fourth magic, which states that energy weapon kills boost grenade recharge rate for you and nearby allies. Now we're gonna get a buff to grenade damage, 10% per stack. And each stack, I guess, originating from the energy kills we get, right? Or is that actually gonna come from how many allies that we're buffing the recharge rate? Is that gonna feed into the stacks? It's been a minute, fellas. I haven't used Verity's Brow in a while. I will say this, a fantastic build is Verity's Brow and Wrist Runner together. Do some nasty stuff, man. So those are your exotic buffs. Pretty nasty stuff. A very large update. I mean, this is actually a pretty big overhaul. I'm actually excited to try out every single one of these. Now, moving on. Investment. Legendary Ingrams. Increase the number of armor sets available from raw drops to 11 sets up from 3. This will include Faction Rally armor. So players who own previous Faction Rally ornaments may apply them to these sets. Several sets that were previously unavailable or extremely difficult to acquire are now available as raw drops. Wow, that's huge. No lie, Faction Rally sets a pretty sexy armor. Now armor stats. Prime Ingrams will now more reliably drop armor with higher overall stat rolls in spikier distributions. Exotic armor will now more reliably drop with higher overall stat rolls. Legendary armor now has an improved chance of receiving higher overall stat rolls though low rolls will still be present. Big, big changes, guys. How many times do you pick up a legendary piece of armor and it's 48, man, or just 50, right? There's gotta be a change, and especially primes. I don't ever get excited about primes. Now, if there's actually gonna be an increase there and the potential to get higher stats overall, and as Bungie stated right here, spike your distributions, which sounds sexy, what that necessarily means is that you're gonna have an overcommitment of stat points to more specific stats, maybe intellect, maybe discipline, for those of us that are really trying to perfect whatever build it is we're going for. As for the roll drops itself, that sounds really cool. The ability to obtain all these different armor sets. The only downside that I see to this is for people out there that are trying to actually farm for like a last hope or an old fashioned. Adding all of these different armor sets to that roll drop is really gonna make RNG a tough nut to crack if trying to go after those weapons. And I have yet to get a god roll last hope. If I'm thinking about this correctly, this is gonna be even more difficult with all the different options that you're gonna have as potential rewards when turning in legendary Ingrams. That's my only concern here. I love the sexy armor, but I will say if you have not gotten a well-rolled old-fashioned Uriel's Gift, Last Hope, you may want to do that right now. Now moving on, user interface. The setting screen UI layout on consoles has changed to match the experience on PC, allowing for future updates. They added the ability to change the color of the reticle on consoles. Oh! 
players can now choose from seven different colors matching PC. They also added hint text during loading screens, added comma separators to the glimmer count in the loot stream, added categories to the quest screen. Quest items will now be automatically filtered to any of the seven categories. New light, all quests, shadow keep, seasonal, playlists, exotics, and the past. Excellent, excellent changes. Now I know somebody's gonna bring it up. Bungie, are we ever gonna get an FOV slider for consoles? That would be nice. That really, really would be nice. I'm gonna be honest with you fellas. I don't think it's gonna happen this generation, but PlayStation 5, Xbox One X series, you will have FOV sliders, most likely, in combination with 60 FPS. Oh, it's gonna be nasty. Now moving on, performance. Fix UI stuttering and frame rate drops when loading or applying mods. Thank Jesus. Improve frame rate and Gambit and Gambit Prime. Oh yeah. They also fix frame rate issues for the sanctifying mind encounter of the Garden of Salvation raid. Fix frame rate issues in the Pit of Heresy dungeon. Fix stutter at high frame rates on PC. General improvements to performance on PC when a lot of debris is on the ground. And Bungie continues, while this list is pretty lengthy, we'll have more patch notes to share with you next Tuesday around 9 a.m. Pacific, an hour before Season of the Worthy begins. Now, some of you may be asking, wait, 10 a.m.? Don't patches usually ship at 9 a.m.? Daylight saving time begins on Sunday, March the 8th. If your region takes part in jumping forward, your weekly reset time will be an hour later than you're used to. More information from player support team below. So the new season, Destiny service maintenance will begin at 8 a.m. Destiny 2 will be taken offline at 8.45. 9 a.m. Update 2.8 will roll out. 10 a.m. Destiny 2 will be back online and Season of the Worthy will begin. There's also a number of upcoming resolved issues that will be addressed after Update 2.8 and Season of the Worthy become available. So guys, that is your final patch note preview leading up to Season of the Worthy. I gotta say guys, the changes that have been mentioned over the past three weeks is the equivalent of changes that we receive normally going into like an annual expansion. Forsaken, Shadowkeep, the amount of changes that are about to hit our sandbox next Tuesday it's going to be wild. Again, as the update goes out, fellas, we'll be covering each and every single one of those changes. I'll have like an overview video going over the sandbox patch notes themselves, just in case there are some minor tweaks. And then of course, afterwards, we'll be diving into each one of those things and testing them out. Oh, it's going to be nasty. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.